Hello, this is Steve with Pro Tools PC, and in this second part of a two-part video series, I wanted to look at syncing two Pro Tools systems via network. To take this a step further, it'll be with both a Mac and a PC. So this will show you how to do it uh, to connect both platforms, or you can do it the same way with two Macs or just two PCs. Before we start, we'll need to download a couple programs. We'll need Splashtop Personal and Streamer for video. Um, so as we can see here, we can drag you know, the Mac desktop on top of the PC. And if you're not sharing video, you won't need that. And then we will need RTP MIDI on the PC that will allow uh, MIDI over network. So here for Splash Top, um, it allows you to screen share via a master and slave paradigm. It works over your local internal network, so no internet connection is needed and the latency will be better than say with TeamViewer, something like that. On your master system, which will be the PC in this situation, we will uh, install Splashtop Personal. It is free, and again, it only screen shares over your local internal network. On the slave system, you will install Streamer, which is the MacBook in this case. You will have to create an account with Splashtop, and you also have to log in when you launch Personal and Streamer, and you may be required to approve the computer via an email the first time. It may sound like a lot, but all in all, it was probably a few minutes at best. It wasn't really a big deal. The other subject to discuss is how the computers connect. If it's a wireless network, um, it may be okay. There's really no way for me to know. But if they are connected together via network cable, um, which doesn't need to be a crossover cable, just so you're aware, or if it's through a hub, it'll always be more reliable in my experience. And really wired seems like it's almost always necessary if you're trying to do both video and MIDI reliably. So as I mentioned previously, RTP MIDI needs to be installed on the PC. So you can just search, here it is, um, the download links right there. And below it is the tutorial. Um, I'll go through it briefly, but he has a pretty detailed tutorial. And the one thing I do wanna note is that it specifies Bonjour does need to be installed. Now, like me, anytime I install, you know, like iTunes or something, I always disable Bonjour. So it will need to be running in order for this to work. And also to confirm, the setup process will be identical on both Mac and a PC. So for a quick run through after we launch our TP MIDI, um, we can see directory down here at the bottom. That's just saying what other computers are currently available. Um, my laptop's there. We don't really need to pay attention to it currently. Um, and then my sessions, that would be um, the actual system that you are running. So if you click on the plus to create a new session, you can come over here to the local name and change the local name, which I'll just change real quick to show you. And once we click enabled, we are basically ready to go on that system. And that's literally all we need to do at this point. So let's pull in the Mac and hit spotlight and search for audio MIDI. There it is. And uh, let's close this. Let's click on network. Okay, and as we can see, it basically looked like it's configured, set up and ready to go. But let's go ahead, erase, um, delete this session and we'll start a new one. So just hit the minus sign here and nothing's there. So let's hit plus to start a new session. And here is session one. Um, I'd like to do custom name. So let's come over here to local name and change it. And let's change the bonjour name as well. And then click enabled. So we can see immediately both lists are populated here on the Mac side and on the PC side, the Mac is showing up on there. 
And one thing to look at is here is uh, who may connect to me, anyone, only users in my directory. And right here's our directory where we can see the MacBook. And probably uh, computers in my directory is the best, safest setting to use, but I'm not too worried about it. So the other issue I have ran into is um, a firewall issue where one side or the other won't let you connect. It basically just says it's blocked. But just be aware sometimes if that happens, maybe go over to the other side and click in your directory on the one you want to um, connect to. Hit connect and it may go through that way if you don't have a firewall on the other side. So in this case, we are ready to move forward. So let's click on the MacBook Pro on the PC side here in the directory. And let's hit connect. And we can see our participants list is populated on both sides. So we are connected and ready to go. So now that we are connected, let's go launch Pro Tools on both systems. And also, just for reference, my preference would actually be to bounce out, uh, the final audio anyway, is to bounce that out of the slave system and then just drag the WAV file into the master system rather than recording it. So as I mentioned earlier, we are using MTC. So we need to set up the systems to read and generate MTC. So on both systems under setup, then peripherals, and the default window is synchronization. You have two options, MTC reader port and MTC generator port. The master system will be the generator, the slave will be the reader. So on each system, you need to select the MIDI device. So it was the network device you created on that system. So on the PC, we select Pro Tools PC2. And then over on the Mac side, we'll do the same thing. So we'll hit Setup. Whoops. Setup, Peripherals, uh, the Synchronization window. And let's go to the Reader port. And on the reader port, we will select the MBPO that I created. So now both systems should be set up um, to either read or generate MTC. But now what we have to do is actually enable it within the session. Um, you know, turn it on, turn it off within the session. Over here on the Mac side, on the uh, slave in this case, we need to turn on wait for sync. Uh, Command J is a shortcut, Control J on PC. And then when you turn that on, you'll see waiting for sync down here in the bottom left corner. And at that point, it's ready to go, it's waiting. And on the master system, we need to generate MTC. So you can hit, if you don't see it, you can hit your drop down arrow here or over here on the far right, synchronization, so we can see it. And then we turn off generate MTC right there. So let's get both systems on screen here. Um, oops, let me size this out a little bit. And let's just hit play and see what happens real quick. We do have to um, input enable here on the master system. And you should have your audio connection set up from the uh, slave system, out of the slave system, into the master. Um, one thing I will say is that the synchronization, um, the latency between the two systems when using a network cable as opposed to a, uh, a MIDI cable uh, through MIDI interfaces to network the devices, the sync is far better using the network cable and doesn't require as much compensation, as much offset between them. So another thing to note is there's usually a short lag from when you hit play till when the slave system actually starts. So usually my recommendation there is to give yourself a measure or two just to be safe to make sure there's plenty of time. So that way, by the time the music kicks in, everything you're doing, you know, both systems are on and ready to go. 
The only other thing I would recommend is uh, over here on the click track on the slave system, let's commit that click. So um, select the click track, right click it, go down to commit and this will rule out any possible anomalies drifting any odd stuff like that and then we would actually measure it and do everything based off this recorded click track not the actual instrument playing back so let's go through and record a bit of this click That sounds really close, like there's possibly not much offset, if any at all, um, on the track, but let's zoom in and have a look at it. So everything looks dead on. I'm using this exact same setup. Um, in the previous video, I show where there's um, over 600 samples of offset between the... Um, the slave system and where the master is and we have to compensate that so if you need to learn how to compensate that you can go back to the first video which is uh, syncing two Pro Tools systems via MIDI cable. So the one thing I would recommend is to record say a bar of the click track from the slave system into the master before the actual music, before the loop music, whatever it is starts. That way if there is any offset, anything you need to change like that, you can easily do that uh, really quick by uh, just visualizing the click on the bar on the grid. So I apologize for how bad the loop is, I just, Put this together really quick for this example and let's go ahead and uh, record a bit of this loop. Okay, I apologize to your ears for how bad that was, but let's zoom in and have a look. So if you've got offset here when zoomed in, as you can see, um, anything like that to deal with, if you've got a latency on playback between the systems, I would recommend going back to the first video of this two-part series. I go over that stuff in a lot more detail. I wanted to make this one a lot more brief, just focusing on how to set up the network connection between the two systems. So um, one more thing to go over I sh probably should have covered earlier in the video is your session setup. These are the parameters that are set when you create your sessions. But here under setup, uh, you can go to session. And here we can see, uh, most importantly, sample rate, bit depth, uh, session start. Um, so most importantly, so most importantly, if your ultimate goal is to actually export everything out of the slave system and then pull it into the master system, for instance, if your sample rates don't match and you don't do sample rate conversion on the input, um, it could play back too slow, too fast, things like that. The bit depth, again, don't have to match, but it could be um, converted on the input. So best practice, I like to keep that stuff matched so there's no issues, no issues fans or butts. On the other side here at session start, this is vital because if your start times don't match, um, zero on your master system, you would want it to be, you know, where zero should be on your slave system. And if those don't match, that your start times will be off by how far the time is off. So if your session uh, setup start time on the slave system is set at one hour, every time you hit uh, start on your master system at zero, it would start at one hour on the slave system. So of course you don't want that. So I hope the video was helpful. Any questions, comments, anything like that, you can get a hold of us on our website. And thank you for watching.